Hello, in this video I'll be showing you how to do a runs test on a time series. In this particular case the data I'm using is uh, gas use in hundreds of cubic feet that I used in each 24 hour period at my home uh, at the starting at the end of January uh, through the end of February for a total of 30 days. So each, each uh, measurement here represents the amount of gas used, natural gas, in the previous 24 hours. I'll start by making a time series plot of the data by highlighting the data, the day index, and the response variable gas used. I start highlighting, shift control down, arrow key, insert, scatter, connect the points because it's a time series. Uh, post this near the top here and we see uh, I won't take the time to edit this uh, overly much but we can see that there's a slight downward trend which would make sense knowing that this data is from the end of January to the end of February uh, so spring was approaching and technically I should be using less heat on average to warm the house I'll convert this data into binary form. So I'll create a new column called binary. And then anytime a value is below the average gas use, this will be coded 0. If it's above the average gas use, coded 1. I'll find the average gas use right here. I'll say, uh, well, I'll call it the mean. And then here, I'll, to calculate it, I use a function equal average. And then I'll highlight the values over here. So it says the average is 5.1. Now if one of these values happens to be 5.1, it would be neither below nor above the average, and then you would not count that point. But uh, I can find the average to an extra decimal place anyway. So then definitely all the points will be either above or below this average. Now here in D4, I'll type a function equal if this is less than this uh, average then give me a zero otherwise give me a one okay and it correctly coded this now I want to copy this formula down however uh, since it's grabbing this cell I want it to continue to grab this cell for all these points so I'll lock in cell H2 click in the H next to the H2 and hit the F4 key dollar signs get put around the uh, H2 hit enter, then double click the lower right corner, and now this is in binary form. Remember, you can't do a runs test on metric data. It has to be in binary form. Now, this is not a very long uh, data set, so I could easily count the number of runs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten runs. Okay, but if you have a large set of data, Maybe you want to have the computer count for you. So here's what you could do. You could start off with an initial one, and then uh, do another if then, equal if. This is equal to the one above it. Then that means the run is continuing. So just um, use the runs from above. Otherwise, start over at. Uh, add one to the number of runs. Okay. And you can see it did it correctly here. We have 10 runs total. Okay. The next thing I'll do, I'll insert a few blank columns here. I want to do my uh, runs test. Now, for this runs test, I'm going to need R, N0, oops, N0, N1, N, and then I'll need to find the expected value of R, the variance of R, and the standard deviation of R. I'll convert that into Z, standardizing it, and then I'll find a p-value for the test. Okay, I'll right format all of these to make it look a little better. Okay, now I know R is 10. N0. I can count the number of zeros 
manually. Um, but here I know that there's uh, 30 observations total, 30 days. I could count the number of ones by saying equals sum and then selecting the column of binary values. And it will count the number of ones because that's the same as the number of ones. And then here, I'll, since there are no points that were tied with the average, n minus n1 gives me uh, the number below the average. Okay. Uh, expected value from page 67 of the textbook. The formula for this says equal 1 plus 2 times n0 times n1 all divided by n. There's the expected value. I'll format all these cells to three decimal places. The variance, page 67, says equal 2 times n0 times n1 times quantity 2 times n0 times n1 um, minus n quantity all divided by n squared and also divided by n minus 1. There's the variance to get the standard deviation. Type equal sqrt for square root. Grab that variance. There's the standard deviation. Standardize that data. Equal quantity r minus the expected value all divided by the standard deviation. Okay, so if this series of gas use data was random, then we would expect to get about 13, 14 runs, but we only got 10. That's fewer than expected. What's the likelihood of that happening? Uh, well, this is where the p-value comes in. So here's a function in Excel, norms, dist, grab that uh, z-value. It's going to find the area to the left of the provided z-value. Okay, so that's pretty unlikely. This is the chance that we would get as few runs or fewer than that we have actually gotten the data given that this is a random process. Now it's not quite less than 5%, so we would not reject that idea that it's a random process. If you uh, were not sure which way the data was going before collecting it, then you should double your p-value. So I'll multiply that by 2. This is the two-sided p-value. So again, if you weren't sure if there would be fewer runs than expected or more than expected, then you should do a two-sided test. Just be careful when you're finding the p-value because if z is positive, remember that function gives you area to the left, so then you should uh, subtract it from 1 first before finding the p-value. Okay, so uh, in this case, this test says don't disbelieve the idea that the gas use data is random. However, with our, you know, with other knowledge that you have at your disposal, I would tend to believe this is not random. I think my gas use is going down, and that could be explained by the change of the season. Okay, that's it.